You know we all have them. Those pieces that didn't come out quite the way you hoped. This technique is so easy and would be perfect for covering them up and making them gorgeous. Be sure to stay till the end for how to make a sweet floral accent that goes perfectly with this technique. Hey there, Sandy here. Want to be inspired and grow in your creativity? You're in the right place. Welcome to another polymer clay video at keepsakecrafts.net. This texture technique is one I call rustic opals. It's something I came up with just messing around and playing with what I had, which is something I highly recommend you do. It's the best way to make new creative discoveries. Now the base of your heart isn't really going to show much. Some of it might show, so I recommend just grabbing some scrap clay that is in the general color family of what you want. But like I said, in the end, I, not much of it's going to show, but it may make have an effect on the final one. So I just have some scraps in some pinks and blue. And as with most any sculpted object, we'll start with a smooth ball of clay. And as before, make your shape. We're doing hearts. So we'll roll to get our teardrop shape and I will show you on this one what happens if you cut it. Yeah, the sharp side is good. <laughs> so you use a blade to cut those lobes and you can get down nice and deep but you can see you kind of have all of that in there that has to be smoothed out. Which is why I kind of prefer the method of using that got to have a tool. But you can do it this way too, especially if you want some nice deep lobes. If I were worried about how this looked, you could, I would come in with a tool and really smooth this out. But like I said, we're going to cover this, so you're not going to see much of it. You just want to get the general shape. Now I got the idea for using opal clay in this next step because I had tried to use opal clay for something else and because of the mica flakes that are in there, here I'll show you, when you cut through it with a blade, can you see you end up with this, this ragged edge on the piece of clay that you cut as well as on your blade, all these little bits of mylar that are in there kind of make a mess. So it did not work at all for what I wanted to do with it, but it occurred to me that to take that thing that was a weakness and use it as a strength. So I wanted to make something textural and this seemed like a good way to do it. This is Primo Opal, which it's basically just translucent clay with these little flecks of mylar in there. You want to roll your opal clay out to a fairly thin setting. This is like a number seven on my Atlas pasta machine, which is just under a millimeter thick. Then you're going to wrap this around your heart. Kind of pinch those seams. You don't have to do this particularly neatly and you don't really have to worry about getting out all the air bubbles. I'm just using my thumbnail to kind of trim it off. You can use a blade. Now this layer is going to be our outer layer, so I will take some time to just smooth down those seams, but you don't have to make it perfect. If you love creative new techniques like this, you should consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. Not only do patrons get monthly bonus tutorials, but we have a great time learning and chatting in our creative book club video meetings. And this is the final shape that will show. No worries about those air bubbles because the next step is to make it even more textural. What I have here is just a bent needle tool. I love these. You're going to point it down and drag. And what this gives you, so if you, if you do it like this, you end up with a smooth line. But if you drag like this, you end up with a jagged line. So you can see why I was not worried about air bubbles because we're, we're going to be releasing all of them. And you can make these marks any way you want. You can make them all in one direction. I kind of like having them hash marked in different directions. Get your edges and all over. Keep in mind that the 
first side you do, when you flip it over and do the second side, will probably smooth it out a little. So you might want to do your front, your back, and then flip it over and do your front again, knowing that the back will end up a little bit smoother in texture. But I love that this not only pulls up crumbles of the translucent clay, but it also kind of roughs up those mylar bits. So can you see them sparkling there? So you just kind of go at it as much as you want with the needle tool. And you can reshape and then retexture because that smoothed it out a little. And go back and forth until you are happy. And I'm just kind of picking up those crumbs with the texture and the shape. And once you've finished with all of that, you can bake that. I bake this for an hour because it's, it's over half an inch thick. So bake it for a good little while and you'll end up with something like this. Now you can stop here, but in order to really get a very cool opal look, I used some alcohol inks. You can use any colors you want. I have pinata in Passion Purple and Baja Blue, and I also have some uh, rich gold. The metallics, can you see the top here is clear and the bottom's got all the, the mi mixatives? So you definitely want to shake this up. There's a little ball in there and you'll hear it. So you want to keep shaking until you hear the ball. And then shake a little bit more to make sure it's all mixed. So you should be seeing that mica at the top as well. Now this can be kind of messy. I'm not worried about the crumbles of alcohol ink here because this is going to be messy. On some projects you might want to be careful not to open your alcohol ink over your project because of those crumbles, but in this case it doesn't matter. Then you just add little tiny drops. Try to add the smallest amount you can. Like touch it. Barely squeeze it. And add ink. You can use as many colors as you want. I just would suggest that you choose colors that will blend together nicely, like purple and blue, or green and yellow. I will also add some of this gold, which just adds a really beautiful look. Don't add too much. You don't want it to overtake everything. And then we're going to add some rubbing alcohol. If you have a dropper, that's great, or a pipette, just to pull some up, just a drop here and there to make those colors spread. See how it makes the colors move? See how it also made the colors on the tile bloom? And then even the, the kind of just goes around back. You almost don't even have to add anything to the back. If there are any areas that didn't get color, you can kind of just dip them into that. You might want to wear gloves. And this will all clean up also with rubbing alcohol. And I think on the back here, I do want to add a little bit more gold. And it's pretty purple, so maybe a little blue. And if it's a little strong, which this is, isn't bad, but if it's a little strong, you can just add some alcohol to cause it to disperse. Here's another one I did the other day. That gold just really adds to the sparkly opal. So I used my rubbing alcohol to clean up the tile and now I'm working on a little floral accent. Just using more of that opal clay and rolling little tiny balls somewhere around an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Well, that would be big for this project. It really depends on the scale of your project. You can use this technique to make a rose of any size. And I'm just rolling balls, rolling them fairly smooth, and then flattening them on the tile. If you find they're really sticking to your fingers, you can flatten them down with just a piece of paper. And because my fingers have ink on them, they're actually tinting the translucent clay, which is actually sort of fine with me. For cleaning ink like this off your fingers, if you don't have gloves, a Ranger Craft Scrubby is fantastic. It's kind of like um, the magic eraser, but for your hands. So just flatten them. Gosh, what a mess. <laughs> flatten you want somewhere around 8 to 10 per flower. You want to start with a fairly small one to make the center. So I'll make this one little. 
this is another case where those mylar flakes, where there are times when they are definitely a pain in the neck and a detriment. But in this case, because the edges of roses tend to be kind of ruffled and not perfectly smooth, this will add to the effect. So use your clay blade to release all of these from the tile. Start with your smallest one and just roll that into a little curl and that will be the center of your flower. If you want to, you can kind of take your finger and push those edges out, open it up a little bit more. Then you'll just proceed going from smallest to largest to add more of these around here. Make sure when you put these on that you put them a little above. Can you see that there's maybe a third of that petal above this center? Because if you put them all lined up, it'll, it'll just be a weird shape in the end. And you just keep wrapping these around the center, overlapping them a little bit. Again, you can use your finger to stroke it out, and you can see how even though those mylar flakes are sticking out, they kind of add to the uh, ruffly edge look of a flower. And my uh, inky fingers also kind of has given it <laughs> the, the variegated colors of a really pretty rose. And you just keep going around until your flower is the size you want. And as you're going, you can also, I'm kind of pinching and squeezing with my fingers on the back here. Just like that. We'll open it up a little. Here's one I made earlier. You can see I left that bit of clay that I was holding onto in the back. I just left it there because it's very delicate and difficult to manipulate while it's unbaked. But at this point, I can now come in with my clay blade and very easily cut this off. Now this is one reason I'm actually not a huge fan of Primo translucent clay because it really does yellow in the oven. It's funny how yellow it looks there on the tile, but then when I put it here on this heart, it actually looks pretty good. Add a dab of liquid clay, and I sort of love the idea that these are both opal clays so they work together well, but this one is tinted. I should mention, if you're going to use liquid clay to attach your baked flour to your baked heart, you do need to put it back in the oven again to set the liquid clay. Personally, I think this is a much more secure bond than if you use something like super glue. But if you want to save the extra baking step, you could use E6000 or super glue. This is a fun textural technique that you can use to accent just about anything. Now that you've seen this project, you'll want to check out all the sculpted projects on the Polymer Clay Sculpting Playlist I put together for you.